Hey guys, Thea here. I'm here in New York at the NBA 2K Women's Development Camp talking to some women about how to overcome struggles in game and how to become a professional. Counter-Strike, specifically my game since I was 11, so almost nine years now. I play professionally for Dignitas, which is a CSGO team owned by the 76ers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm from Pennsylvania, South Central Pennsylvania. And, and as I recall, you uh, the announcement was officially made of your appointment yeah. just a week ago, yes, right? Yes, I just so, signed with Dignitas one week ago. Let's get her. We'll get to hear a little bit uh, more uh, from you in just a second. All right, my colleague here, uh, you tell us a little bit about I'm, yourself. Well, I'm not saying my eight. <laughs> <laughs> Taj McWilliams Franklin. I always say my pronouns are she, her, and diva, because I am one. Um, I, uh, gosh, I've been playing longer than she's been alive now. <laughs> I played 21 years as a professional. Uh, Athlete, and uh, currently I work in the league office, the NBA office, as part of a program for former players, learning the business of basketball so I can work in front of us. Um, I don't know. There's something you didn't mention. You didn't mention you were a two time WNBA champion, a six time uh, all star. Yeah, all those. Okay. <laughs> all those things. Much more. So she's been, uh, she's been modest, but uh, quite, quite, uh, quite a series of accomplishments. So, Melissa. Uh, you, I know you live in South Central Pennsylvania, yeah. my home state. Uh, but t tell us a little bit about uh, you know the town you grew up in, and then tell us about your introduction to uh, to, to video games at the yeah. age of four. Now, yeah. How how did you get started? All right, so I have three older brothers. I live in a small town, small town Pennsylvania called Hanover. Um, uh, yeah, I have three older brothers, very into gaming. My dad got them into gaming. I uh, played a little bit of World of Warcraft and CS:GO. And so you got it because your brothers were in, or did you? Did you yeah, your father so, encourage you to? No, my it was my brothers. They so when I was fourteen, a freshman in high school, my brother wanted me to start playing or streaming on Twitch. Mm -hmm. So I've been streaming on Twitch since I was fourteen, so six years now. Um, but yeah, they I didn't even want to play CS:GO when it first came out. Kind of like how you didn't want to play basketball. I wasn't interested in it. But my brothers kept you know pushing me. They're like, you're gonna really like this game. I promise. So. I started playing it and I fell in love. I've been playing since well, 2012 when CSGO came out. And um, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so you you didn't necessarily want to play initially, but when did, what made you get serious? Or, you know, when did you get okay. to that point you were saying, I want to be competitive? Okay, so in 2014, I joined my first team just with some random friends. I started to get to know more people in the scene, and there was actually a local LAN in Philadelphia, which I go to every single year. They have it every year. So I went when I was 15 years old, and I went not to play, but to meet the people in the scene who inspired me to keep playing, who I love, which actually were some of my teammates today. Yeah, I like I went to that tournament. I met them there, and I just wanted to join their team from that moment. Our inspiration and relationships too. So with Dignitas specifically, I've tried out three times. It took me three tryouts um, over the course of like three years. So uh, after two years after I met the team, uh, they asked me to try out and I tried out and I just wasn't a fit for the role. And that was okay because I just needed to keep playing my game and getting better. And so a year after that, they asked me to try out again. I was like, yes, this is my chance. I got this. And I tried out, and another girl just fit the role better. And so I just kept playing, kept getting better, kept improving myself. And finally, just a couple months ago, they asked me to try out, and I fit the role perfectly. So, so I, I suspect you learned something throughout that process. Tell us a little bit about uh, your, your thought process after you know, the first two times, and tell us a little bit about how you prepared for eventually, obviously, eventually making. Right, so there's a lot of things that go into improving in the game. I think the main thing you can do is just keep playing. The more you play, the better you're going to get. And it all just 
comes down to the practice. And of course, there's different uh, routines that you can have to practice. Uh, if you want me to go on specifics, you can. I think watching professionals is one of the best ways, and definitely playing against better players is the best way to improve. I improved exponentially when I joined this team because I wasn't playing against the, the level of players that they are playing against. And so I just immediately saw. What, what's been the most unexpected experience, the most surprising thing about the, Most surprising? Oh, the first tournament I got to go to um, about one month or two months after joining the team, I got to go to Spain and compete in a $100,000 tournament. Yeah, and uh, my team, they're used to getting first place, you know, they grind it out, they're world champions every time, and uh, with me as a new addition to the team, it was a little bit harder, um, but we came out in third place, and we were still really happy with what we accomplished, but that was amazing. My first tournament ever, <laughs> international <laughs> tournament, and we got third place in space. Wow. Question. For both of y'all, about how long do you practice? For me, I practice 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. every night. Uh, and that's just with the team specifically. And then besides that, we have to put in our own time, like uh, practicing our aim, practicing or watching demos of uh, professional players. And yeah, it's a long, <laughs> every day. What's your I recently read in an NBA 2K article, I forget who said it, but there is enough uh, negativity bringing us down, so women need to keep each other up. And I was so nervous to come here. When they asked me to do this, when Dignitas asked me to come here, I was so nervous and I don't talk in front of people ever. I just joined the professional scene. I don't really do media, but I was so nervous, but my team taught me a quote that pressure is a privilege. And I love that I'm able to come here and talk to you guys and share my journey to become a professional. Did you hear that? Pressure is a privilege. Uh, let's let that be the last word. <laughs> that, that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you for everything you shared. Thank you. It was an amazing experience here at the NBA 2K studio to talk to these women and empower them and teach them how to overcome obstacles when faced in esports and I can't wait to see them improve in game. Speaking to my Twitch chat and a live audience is definitely completely different. Uh, one, I'm very nervous at speaking in front of people, um, but it's a privilege to be able to speak in front of these people and pressure is a privilege, so I'm very happy that I get to. You can follow me on Twitch at Thea and on Twitter at DeadThea and Instagram Dead underscore Thea.